If you want to do optical character recognition on your uh, Mac, <laughs> do you know what that is? <laughs> that is where you grab the text out of either an image, a document, or even out of a YouTube video. Imagine that. Or maybe even a real life notebook or something like that. Then I've got a great little app to tell you about that can do all of that and more. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Sometimes I don't really know where I'm going with these intros. Can you tell? <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk about a little application called Text Sniper. And uh, as I say, it's something that can be used for optical character recognition to basically grab text out of uh, not just documents, but out of images and things like that. Or maybe you're watching a YouTube video, you just want to grab some of the text on the screen that's playing at the time, you can do that. Or maybe you want to scan a document on your desk, or perhaps even just your own little uh, scrawled notes. <laughs> I'm not saying you scrawl your notes, I'm sure they're very neat. <laughs> I'm talking about myself here, really. Uh, to maybe take that note and add it into your task manager and grab that as text. Whatever the case, uh, Text Sniper can uh, certainly help with that. So, I'll show you how to use it and I'll show you some of the preferences and things like that. But first of all, I'm going to tell you about how you can actually get it because the first way is to just simply head over to textsniper.app and from there you can download it and you can even try it for free as well. Uh, and the cost of it is $6.99 for one license or if you want to use it on up to three Macs, it's $9.99. However, I'm recommending that you don't use it that way or get it that way. There is a better way to get it and that is as part of the Setup bundle. Uh, Setup is a, basically you pay a one-off subscription, uh, not a one-off, you pay a monthly subscription <laughs> of $9.99 and for that you get access to over 200 great little utility apps uh, and uh, some of them also do have the iPhone counterparts as well. But the, uh, the way that it works is, as I say, you have uh, a flat monthly fee and then for that you can basically download as many of these apps as you want you have a sort of built-in little app store mini app store on your mac which is incidentally what this is <laughs> and you can scroll through pick out any apps you want to try download them try them if you want to keep them keep them if you don't you can just offload them or if you want to uh, just use something occasionally then it's a great way to uh, just get those apps for that short amount of time that you actually need them uh, whereas you might not be interested in paying for a 50 dollar app for a one-off use whereas if you've got it in the setup bundle you can just simply download it use it and then take it off your computer again so it really is a great little uh, collection of apps or massive collection of apps really and if you want to uh, try it out then uh, you can obviously head over to the setup website but i would recommend you use my link which is takeonetech.io slash setup because if you do that you'll get the same one week free trial that everybody else gets but if you sign up you will also then get an extra month added on to your subscription and I will also get a month added onto my subscription for you signing up. So that is how their affiliate program works. Uh, you get the same trial, but then if you sign up, we both get a free month. I highly recommend it. I have done another whole video specifically about setup. So I'll leave a link to that up in the top corner. And I'm also building out a playlist at the moment that is going to be full of just all of the setup apps that I'm using. <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to uh, Text Sniper. That was a bit of an abrupt end to that music, wasn't it? I should have, should have faded it out slowly. <laughs> uh, so te Text Sniper, <laughs> nearly tripping over my tongue, is an app that lives up in the... Uh, I'm not even sharing my screen, am I? That's not very helpful. It's an app that lives up in the menu bar up here with this little sort of sniper's crosshairs. Uh, and it's actually activated using a shortcut key. Uh, and there are some system, uh, there are some preferences rather for it uh, and some other preferences that I shall explain shortly. But for the time being, let me just demonstrate how it works because then you'll have a much better idea of what's going on when we start talking about preferences. So let me come over to a, another website that I've chosen at random with no bias whatsoever. It's the Ecom Live website. What a surprise. And uh, down here, I'm just in the uh, section now, the manuals, which by the way, if you use Ecom Live and you haven't been down to the manuals, I highly recommend you check them out because there's loads of great information in there. And this just happens to be the pay page about using interview mode in Ecamm Live. Now, if we wanted to capture this piece of text, for example, obviously you can highlight the text like this. Uh, but what I've done is I've taken a screenshot of it because uh, the benefit of uh, uh, Text Sniper is that you can use it on screenshots. So here you can see I obviously can't select this text because it is just text in an image. So let me bring this over to another little workspace over here. <laughs> so now I've got this, uh, this text in an image and then I'm gonna bring up an empty note. 
This is just the, the notes app. And the way that Tech Sniper works is you press the shortcut, which is Command Shift 2. You can obviously change these. Uh, but now I've got the little crosshairs, much like you would expect to have if you were doing a screenshot on the Mac. But the difference is if I highlight this text, I get a little notification and it says there's a message just popped up saying copied to clipboard. And now if I click down in my notes and press Command V, it's just pasted the text. So I've just grabbed the text out of that image. It's also great uh, if you've got some sort of uh, like PDFs and things like that where you can't, uh, sometimes you can't actually select the text. So this would be another great use case for that. The other thing is, as I mentioned, is actually extracting text from videos. So if I come back to this uh, page, Let's say you're watching something on YouTube. Uh, this one might be a case in point, in fact. So this is just a video, but it's basically anything that's on the screen. So I can just press uh, my shortcut key, highlight this text and grab this text. And if I go back over to this document, press return and then command V, there we go. It now says interview mode, which was what was on that video. So sometimes if you're watching videos and there's text in them, it's a great way to grab those little snippets out as you're watching them, either just as it's being played or just pause it. So it's basically, it can recognize text anywhere on the screen. <laughs> That's what it's doing. It's that simple. But what it can do also is it can also uh, grab let me get this one second. I just had to, I had to pause there for a moment because I realized I hadn't got my uh, capture device going on my, or capture app going on my Mac, <laughs> on my iPhone rather. Because what else you can do is you can click on the little sniper uh, icon and then you can go to import from iPhone and either take a picture or scan a document. So let me go to take a photo. And now what's going to happen is it should open up on my iPhone. He says, waiting patiently. Uh, there we go. I think that was a little bit of interference because I've got this other screen capture app going. Now, if I open up, here we go. So this is my phone. So now I've got a little note that I made. Make a video. Whoops, a daisy. Make a video about Tech Sniper. So I'm going to capture that. And then you get a little thing at the bottom. <laughs> you can see my thumb in there. But you can also see that I've basically got something at the bottom that says Use Photo. So if I click Use Photo, it's actually just captured that text now and copied it to the keyboard. So if I go back to uh, this for a moment and I just click in here, uh, there we go. <laughs> now, uh, that is actually copied. It's got my initials on the top, so it's tried to copy those and that is just actually embossed in the leather. So uh, <laughs> I'm surprised that it even tried to do that. You can see it's not perfect, but that is my scrawly writing. Make a video about Tech Sniper. It got an extra C for some reason in front of the A uh, and then it's got my initials from my <laughs> note jotter thing. So, but there you go. It has actually captured it pretty well. Uh, make a video about Tech Sniper. And that was from uh, my scrawly handwriting. The other thing that you can do is you can, if I just come down here, uh, come to the Tech Sniper again. And if I go to import and I'll go to scan a document uh, and it's going to load up on my phone again. One second. I don't know why it's been so slow actually. Hang on a second. Let me try this again. I've got a little notification that it said it cannot import the picture. The device timed out. I think that this is something to do with me running NDIHX capture because up until now it has been working flawlessly. <laughs> it's always the case for these things. This is going to be another pro mouse, isn't it? This is going to be another one of those things where I recommend something and then everyone complains about it uh, not working quite as it does do. So you see in the real life here, this is... Uh... <laughs> Let's have a little look. Is it going to work? I'm sure it's the NDIHX capture because, as I say, this has been uh, working flawlessly. Shall I try again? Shall I? Is it worth it? I think it is. Let me try. Scan document. Right, okay. I'm going to try something different now. <laughs> Wait a minute. What I'm going to do is... Uh, everything's going wrong today. Filmic Pro had been offloaded off my uh, camera for some reason. So I've got a book. <laughs> I think it's the first edition, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to scan. Uh, how about this? Not these. How about this first page here? So I'm going to attempt to scan this page. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to actually turn off 
my screen sharing and I'm going to turn off my um, uh, NDI HX capture so that I'm not capturing my mobile because I'm sure that that has got something to do with it not wanting to uh, access the camera. It shouldn't do, but I'm sure that is something to do with it. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it's worked now. So now I can take a picture. There we go. And I'm going to say keep scan. And by the way, with scanned images, you can actually uh, have multiple documents. So you could have like scan multiple pages. And that has been copied to the clipboard. And now I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to paste it there. And there you go. That is the, uh, the first page of How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And it's as quick as that. So it's not perfect. You can see that there is, uh, it didn't quite get the, uh, uh, the gaps in here. There's a space missing there, uh, but it's pretty good. And my f iPhone is not one of the latest ones either. So I'm sure on a better quality camera, it would be even better. But that is basically how it works. So you can use it on text, written text, my scrawly handwriting. <laughs> you can use it on uh, actual text in uh, modern books <laughs> and magazines, or you can use it on any text on the screen. So let's have a little look at some of the settings that you've got in here, because uh, there's a few other features as well. So I'll come over to the settings and in, actually let me take you into the uh, the actual drop down menu first. Uh, so first of all, you've got the uh, obviously the option to capture text and that is just the shortcut that I told you about, Command Shift 2. Uh, you've also got uh, read QR or barcodes. So if you see a QR code then uh, that normally you would scan with your phone, well if you've got one of those on the screen somewhere then you can use this to scan that and then that will take you to whatever it is linking to. Uh, we've already looked at the import from phone. Uh, there's another one here for, these are basically toggles, either keep line breaks so you can toggle that one on or off. Uh, uh, either that or it would just obviously all the text will run continuously together. Um, in fact, <laughs> I probably should have done that when I took this one here so that it was a bit better formatted. Uh, you can also do additive clipboard. And what that means is you can basically take a series of snapshots and then they will all be added to the clipboard so that then when you paste it, it will just be one big long length of text. So if you were watching a video, for example, and you, uh, as they were going through, there was different pieces of text coming up all the way through the video. You could just keep capturing that as it goes through. And then when you get to the end of the video and you want all the text, you just paste it all in in one uh, one go. Uh, then you've also got uh, clear clipboard history if you want to if you've been adding stuff to the clipboard you can delete that but we've also got text to speech so if I add this in and toggle that one on you can see it's now got a little tick mark next to it text to speech then if I come over here and activate my uh, uh, screen sharing again and I'm just gonna hide not screen sharing my uh, clipping I'm gonna highlight this and hopefully you should hear this your name will be shown at the top of the host camera to change the name click the tiny pencil button or double click on your name there you go so it can actually just read what's on the screen even in an image and obviously you can do this in the Mac with uh, uh, if you want to highlight text but where you haven't got text that can be highlighted such as in an image this is a way that you can do that uh, one thing you can't seem to do is actually have that match the system voice so you're just stuck with uh, this vo voice which i believe is it alex the uh, is the name of the voice <laughs> in uh, in the mac uh, so you can't actually it doesn't match what i've got set as my siri voice for example um so uh, i'm not quite sure about that but it's you're sort of stuck with that voice i think but anyway um the next one is the uh, preferences, obviously, and quit text uh, sniper. So this one, by the way, we've got one that's grayed out there, which is stop speaking. So if you start it speaking and then want it to uh, be quiet again, <laughs> then that's where you would do that. So I'm going to come into the preferences now, and uh, which I already had open. Here they go. <laughs> so if I uh, just bring these in here like this. So we've got three different sections to the, um, the preferences. In fact, let me just... Uh, no, that's a bit too, I was going to be a bit bold there. I was going to try and resize this in the middle of it, but I, I won't bother. <laughs> that, that is going to doom me to failure, I think. Uh, I'll just use the zoom tool here. So in the preferences, we've basically got three different sections, the general custom words, which we'll come to and shortcuts, which we'll come to afterwards. Now we've got a couple of options here to launch at login, which you may or may not want to do. And then we've also got show in the menu bar to choose whether you want it to appear here or not. 
You've also got, uh, and by the way, these are all just the default settings at the moment as I've got them, but I'll show you which one I would recommend changing perhaps. Uh, next, we've got disable sound effects or disable success notifications. So you do get a little notification pop up saying that something's been copied to the clipboard. Uh, I've just left that on, to be honest, because it's nice to get a little visual that, that it has actually worked. Uh, next is the recognition language. So this is interesting. <laughs> you can change it between English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Portuguese or Chinese simplified or traditional. So those are the languages that it will recognize. Uh, next, with the additive clipboard, uh, <laughs> the additive clipboard <laughs> is what I meant to say. Uh, so that was the thing where you can just keep taking little snapshots and it will add it all to the clipboard. Uh, you can set it here to basically clear automatically once you've pasted. So once you uh, once you've copied all these things in and then when you go into your document and press command V to paste it, then it would wipe the clipboard and start you with a fresh slate as it were. So that's what that one is. Now, incidentally, this app, when you install it, it's another one of these ones, as most of these little utilities are, where it's going to ask you to go into system preferences, into the security and privacy settings, and you'll have to activate uh, a couple of the things in there, but it will tell you which ones to do. And this additive clipboard thing, by the way, is one that I do have toggled on, and that's one where it says here, you'll have to uh, add the... Um, thing to the accessibility permissions uh, will be required for uh, for this one to be active. So that's just to be aware of. Uh, text to speech rate. So that is the uh, speed that you are it is reading back at. Uh, so you can change that here. So the uh, this is, by the way, the only one that I've changed from the default. The next thing is custom words. So if you are using words or names or things like that that are maybe uh, not entirely standard or different spellings of them or things like that or maybe technical words uh, that you want it to pick up, you can basically just add in all of those words here and then it will always just take that as a priority over any other spelling or anything like that. So uh, my name with a C, <laughs> for example, might be a good one for me to put in there so it doesn't always just get Alex, which uh, even my autocorrect gets my name wrong. I mean, what a slap in the face that is never mind <laughs> so then we've got the uh, shortcuts and with the shortcuts we've got the uh, global uh, shortcut for the capture obviously these are all user definable but you can also do other things in here like if you just want to capture the last selection capture without line breaks capture with line breaks so these are things that you can toggle on and off in here if you want um, but you can also just have a dedicated shortcut so that it will do just that thing you know we could set up a dedicated barcode uh, uh, shortcut for reading those barcodes or QR codes uh, we can have a keyboard shortcut for to uh, for it to stop speaking. <laughs> uh, we can also have the uh, additive clipboard toggled on or off with a keyboard shortcut as well. Uh, you'll note I haven't actually set these up on this machine. I've got to go through and do all of this again and uh, then program them into my stream deck for those that I use on there. And clear additive keyboard history. There's also, you can do these actually as you are taking the snapshot as well. So if I bring this back up here where it says uh, we've got these shortcut keys. So command L for keep line breaks, command H is for additive clipboard and command S is for text to speech. The way that works with these in this case is this is just when you are taking a general uh, snapshot. So let me just take off text to speech. In this case, when you take the snapshot like this, uh, it will just take the snapshot. But if when I start to take it, whoops, a bit trigger heavy there when I press the key but before I've actually made the uh, the selection then I can press one of those keyboard shortcuts like command s for speech and it's just popped up a notification saying speech is on and now I can just highlight something Post camera. and then it will uh, speak that thing so these are for specifically toggling things on or off sort of mid process if you like so that is, in a nutshell, uh, it. <laughs> that is what it does and how it does it. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple and straightforward application to use. Uh, I would recommend <laughs> checking out Setup if you haven't already. So takeonetech.io slash Setup. If you are using Setup, then do let me know in the comments which other apps from there you think are great and you would like to see uh, tutorials on because I'm slowly working my way through all the ones that I currently use, but there's something there that I still haven't tried out for myself, so uh, it's just a matter of finding the time. But uh, highly recommend it, and uh, while you're down there, obviously don't forget to leave a uh, 
uh, leave. Do you leave a like? No, you just click the button, don't you? <laughs> just go ahead, click that like button and uh, also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this with your fellow Mac users. <laughs> so that's all for now, but I will leave a link to the uh, playlist over on the right hand side with all the other set up apps. So you may want to go and check those out to see what else you could get for $9.99 a month. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.